Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 30, and I'm going to discuss the fundamental theorem for gradients. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous video to this is number 29, where I discuss the fundamental theorem of calculus. And you'll find that this video is just an extension of the fundamental theorem into three dimensions. So for that reason, I need to recap on the fundamental theorem. We came up with the following definition for, a, for the fundamental theorem. If you integrate on a path a to b of the derivative of a function, let's say del f del df dx, and we integrate dx, we may as well, it's the same thing I suppose, if you evaluate the function small f at the, at the boundary points. So df dx is, we'll say, the incremental change in our function. But instead of adding up all the incremental changes, we could have just gone to the end points, subtracted or, or got their difference by subtracting them, and we had the same answer. So let's say we have a function here in this, this kind of green, green line. We evaluate small f at, at b, we evaluate small f at a, and we take their difference. And that's what the fundamental theorem says. It's the same as adding up all the increments. Or another way of writing it is, if I want to integrate the function capital F of X with respect to X, what I need to do is think up of a function whose derivative is equal to capital F of X. And if I do that, then we'll say the derivative, let's say the derivative is, uh, if the function whose derivative is capital F is small f, well then the integral of capital F is just small f evaluated at the boundary points. So let's imagine that we're now going to extend this whole idea into three dimensions. So we have our x dimension, we have our y dimension, or sorry, excuse me, we have our z dimension, our y dimension, and we have our x dimension. Right. Okay, so what we're going to do now is let's think of an arbitrary path in three-dimensional space. I don't know, let's say, I don't know, let's say it does this. I don't know, let's say it does something like that, there's no squiggle at the start. So this is our path. Okay? So instead of having a dx, it would be dx, dy, or dz in one dimension. But in three dimensions, what you're going to have is this, we're going to have this dl. Okay? And this is going to be a vector, dl. So it's the infinitesimal change in the length, uh, in, uh, you know, of, of infinitesimal change in length in three dimensions. So dl would be dx i hat plus dy j hat plus dz in the k hat dimension like that. So, if you think about it, if you want to integrate this function, do the path integral, well then you add up all the different dl's along as we, as we go along, and that, that's how you integrate this function. But if you think about it, another way of doing this, of course, is just by invoking the fundamental theorem, but in three dimensions. So, I don't know, let's say, just, just, for, just for completeness, so we have all our, just drop it all down, my, my art isn't great, let's be honest, I'm going to ignore that because it's a field to draw. Okay, let's say it does something like this. So there are all our infinitesimal changes. Okay, so I've, I've drawn it poorly, I understand that, but it's, it's not really, that's not really very important. What is important, however, is our extension of the fundamental theorem to three dimensions. So we can see, we can see our fundamental theorem up here. So we have df dx integrated dx. Okay, so we know something which is, a, is similar to this, but in three dimensions. And of course, it's going to be the gradient. So we integrate from a to b. We take the gradient of our function. Let's call the function. Uh, let's call the function f. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we take the gradient of our function. We integrate a dot dl because that's how you do a line integral, and that's the same as f at b minus f at a. All right. So I hope that this should make this should make good sense to you because it's just an extension of the fundamental theorem. So this is called the fundamental theorem of gradients, um, and I, I don't think I need to discuss its geometrical interpretation because once you understand the fundamental theorem, it's just an extension to three dimensions. However, the important thing here is that I'm just going to write the fundamental theorem for for gradients here as follows. So it's going to be the gradient, the gradient of f, which of course is a vector field, dotted with our displacement vector dl, and that's going to be f at um, f at b minus f at a. All right, now we, we have two corollaries. The first one is this. If you do a closed line integral of our function, let's say f, which is a vector dot dl, 
That means because it's a closed line integral, it starts at B, we'll say, or let's say it starts at A, let's be consistent, but it also ends at A. That means it's going to be F at A minus F at A, which is equal to zero. So the closed line integral is going to be equal to zero because the beginning and end points are the same. So that is the first, that is the first corollary, and that's very important. We will be using that more than once. And secondly, let's take the integral from A to B of the gradient again dot dl. Because it's equal to f at b minus f at a, it is path oh, there's no e of course, that's very silly. It's path it's independent. It's path independent. So all that matters is the endpoints, so it's an, it's independent of the path. And it's, of course if um, you know, you might talk about physics. If you're talking about physics, you're talking about some sort of a con conservative field, all right? Because it's independent of path. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstorylist.com.